Hello, my name's Steve Miller, and I blow things up for a living. Here are a few demonstrations I did for the media. The crude power of gunpowder. The lethal force of high explosives. The our thousand year quest to create ever bigger, more efficient bangs. And stability. Their mission takes us to the billionths of a second at the very heart of an explosion. But first, we must go back to basics to ask, what is an explosion? A chemical or nuclear reaction causes a fuel to suddenly and violently release energy. It expands rapidly and can produce immensely high temperatures. But all this takes place in just a fraction of a second. To understand what happens in that moment, we need to slow the process down and look into the heart of an explosion. And for that, we visit explosive expert Stephen Miller. Miller believes explosive science is best understood when taken out of the lab. Today, at his range deep in the English countryside, Miller is doing what he does best, blowing things up. He uses powerful explosives to demonstrate what it is that makes them so volatile and destructive. All explosive material burns very quickly, releasing huge masses of gas in a relatively short amount of time. During an explosion, that concentrated gas expands rapidly to fill the available space, then keeps on expanding. That ever-expanding gas cloud applies overwhelming pressure against anything caught in its way. At the heart of an explosion, there is the rapid release of gas. It's this pushing on the local environment that um, destroys anything in its path. It could be cars, buildings, whatever. This is the principle of all explosions, from the very large to the very small. All explosions require three elements. Fuel, oxygen, and a means of ignition. To demonstrate what happens when these three things are brought together, Miller creates a controlled small explosion using baking flour as a fuel. We have uh, oxygen supply coming in through the tube here. Uh, fuel in front of it and our ignition source. And what should happen is it should launch the tin up a few inches with lots of flames coming out. Miller lets oxygen into the tin can. The flame ignites the flammable cloud of oxygen and flour. As the flame rapidly moves through the cloud, there is a sudden increase in pressure. The result an explosion. But it takes a lot of energy and effort to make this relatively small bang. The proportions of oxygen and fuel must be perfect. Too little of either and there will be no explosion. In 75% potassium nitrate containing the oxygen molecules, 10% sulfur, and 15% carbon, in this case, wood charcoal. Charcoal is the fuel, the potassium nitrate provides the oxygen, and the sulfur just helps it burn a bit better. Miller ignites the gunpowder. Firing now. The oxygen from the nitrate enables the sulfur and carbon to burn rapidly, forming a mixture of hot gases and a sharp increase in volume. Put gunpowder in a confined space, and the results are even more dramatic. Miller fills a bottle with half an ounce of gunpowder and places it inside a wooden hut. When the gunpowder explodes, it will release heat and gas. These will build up, increasing the pressure inside the bottle. With nowhere else to go, the gases will expand outward, ripping the bottle apart.
We know we can increase gunpowder's deadly force. Now if we can direct that force, we can propel objects through the air. Gunpowder is a perfectly good explosive. Unfortunately, gunpowder is also very dirty and burning. Up to 70% of the original mass is still left of solids in the smoke. Gunpowder is about to be joined by a new and terrifying explosive. This is trinitrotoluene. Invented as the shadow of war looms across 19th century Europe, it's the world's first modern military explosive, and otherwise known as TNT. Unlike gunpowder, it's more than just a mixture of fuel and oxygen. TNT bonds those two essential components together within its molecules. It's a high explosive, which means the only way to release the explosive energy locked within is to shock it. And to do that, Miller must use a detonator. With high explosives, we have both the fuel and the oxidizer at the molecular level. When the detonator goes off, the shockwave from that breaks these bonds, releasing a massive amount of energy. The elements nitrogen, hydrogen, carbon and oxygen make up TNT. Hit these with a shockwave from a detonator and the molecules rip apart. Miller triggers the detonator. Stand by for firing. Firing now. A series of tiny charges propels a shockwave into the TNT, which detonates at a rate of 22,000 feet per second, generating pressures of over 4,000 pounds per square inch. Oxygen atoms hit by the shockwave bond with carbon and hydrogen atoms. The nitrogen atoms are released as gas. In a fraction of a second, the solid TNT transforms into a cloud of gas. It expands outward in a powerful explosion. As we saw on the high-speed camera, even at a thousand pictures a second, it's very difficult to capture the moment of, of explosion with TNT. That's because it's going off at 20,000 feet per second. TNT is faster, bigger, and more efficient than gunpowder. To demonstrate, Miller loads a shotgun with a specially designed cartridge containing TNT. Stand by for firing. Firing now. The molecular structure of the TNT rips apart so quickly that the steel barrel of the shotgun cannot contain it. The immense pressure of the expanding gas blows the chamber to smithereens. And that's why you use a low explosive propellant instead of a high explosive in guns. But despite its immense power, TNT is far more stable than gunpowder. To prove it, we put it to the ultimate test. A marksman will fire a high velocity bullet at one pound of TNT. From 100 yards away, the bullet will travel at approximately 2,045 miles per hour. But Miller is confident that the TNT won't explode. Our high-speed cameras reveal the moment of impact. The TNT disintegrates in a cloud of dust, but there's no explosion. One pound of TNT is ten times more powerful than one pound of gunpowder. It's also more stable.